Hello, everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Every Day, the show where we encourage you to get out the sidelines and get in the game where I get to talk to people like Heather Rule, C. Willie Miles, even if he's not on the banner for today's show, here he is. And and wait a minute, Daryl Thompson, that's that's not what? Plymouth. No, that's it's not, not Plymouth I'm looking at. Where are you at, brother? I'm in Palm Springs enjoying myself for one more day. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been a wonderful little break here. How long have you been there? Uh, we got here, we came last week and it's a couple of days with my brother in Los Angeles and came over here. So we've been here about four or five days. It's been nice. I've got acclimated. I'm waving at all the people like I'm, like I'm on with. Yeah, so like you're a tomorrow. new neighbor. I'm yeah, a new I'll neighbor. see you tomorrow. I'll be walking right. again tomorrow about the same time. How's your what, pooch doing? Yeah, I love you. Your what you good. guys missed at home was see Willie's, you know, busting his chops about being there and away from this. And then Willie goes, yeah, I'm going there next week. Right. <laughs> so like, In the week after. <laughs> man's got to work man's gotta no, that's go. not work this man's is, got to go yeah, yeah i know i know the man's schedule by now <laughs> we, had, we had ricky foggy on yesterday daryl it was great you know what i'm sorry i didn't get a chance to see that i saw a little bit of it online but um you know rick is a a dear friend and one of the pioneers you know at the, the black quarterback position i hopefully he talked about um sandy stevens and some of his idols yeah. at, at the same time he's um a great guy and a, and a great friend, a great friend. And, um, you know, the, the modern football game would benefit. He would, he would do very well, you know, the run pass option, a, a quarterback that runs more than that has maybe a little bit more running ability and passing ability. He would be just fine. I don't know if he'd be the next Patrick Mahomes, but he would, he'd, he'd carve out a nice little NFL career. I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah, I think would, we all man. probably agree. He probably would have carved out a pretty nice NFL career in the eighties and nineties too. Right. Yeah, absolutely, man. And it's amazing uh, because if you know Ricky the way we do, you've seen him around it. The fact that he was a running quarterback, you know, it, he's pretty healthy. You know what I mean? He he just doesn't have the, you know, the limp <laughs> that a lot of those guys have for being that type, getting hit almost every play. You know, he was just a. Yeah, he's a, he was a great athlete. Well, Rick was dodging blow. He wasn't. He, yeah, Rick, he was. Rick, Rick is, he looks thin now, and he was even thinner when he was young and in mm -hmm. shape. He was not trying to run over anybody. No. He was like, I'm going to get down. I'm going to get out of bounds. I'm going to fake you out. So he took some hits, but it was um, it was not very many. He was right. he was wise, very wise. Yeah, for, for a quarterback, I'm just saying. I, you know, a wide receiver, they're used to taking those hits. Quarterbacks, and Rick Ricky was... I watched him a lot when he was in college, man, and and in the CFL. So he's yeah, he's done, he's done well for himself. He had, he was wise, but he had a little bit of ability too. A lot of ability. <laughs> a lot very of athletic. Ability. Very. When he, when he hit the hole, it was uh, something mm -hmm. special. Hey, you guys, we have a little breaking news this morning, and it's one of those ones where it just this is kind of the head scratcher of the day. U.S. women's soccer players have reached a landmark agreement with the Sports American governing body to end a six-year legal battle over equal pay, a deal in which they are promised $24 million plus bonuses that match those of the men. The U.S. Soccer Federation and the women announced the deal this morning that the players will split $22 million, about a third of what they were seeking in damages. The USSF has also agreed to establish a fund with $2 million to benefit the players in their post-soccer careers and charitable efforts aimed at growing the sport for women. This is one of those mind-blowing things when this first came out in 2016, that they were doing this, and the inequity between the treatment of the two teams when you're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're, so you're telling me the team that's winning the championships and drawing all the people and is on TV is getting less than the team that's not winning and not drawing the people and all the rest of it. How does that work? And here's my my favorite statement of the day, there was a gentleman who was in charge of the U.S. Soccer Federation at that time by the name of Carlos Cordero. And in 2019, he made a statement which said in part, in the legal filing, claimed that women had less physical ability and responsibility than their male counterparts, hence they deserved less money. And the best part is Cordero wants his job back. He was replaced, and he's going to try to get his job back this year after putting that in a legal briefing. Wow. There it is. So, first of all, Heather, as as my lone uh, woman representative on this morning's show, your reaction to them getting this settlement or reaching this settlement is what? 
I mean, that's what I think that's what everyone wants from the women's side is to be equal. That's, you know, I, I talk about it on the hockey side all the time when I speak with, you know, women in the game, you know, women who played, women who coach, um, just kind of that, you know, striking that balance of, well, how do we talk about it without like putting a huge emphasis on, you know, well, you know, we, we want to grow the great game. We want to be equal. Um, but just kind of getting to this point where it's just, that's the way it is. And that's, that's normal. And we don't have to put this big emphasis on, you know, the, the genders and, and the differences. So I think, um, you know, there's a quote from one of the players that I think kind of set up best too, that, you know, for our generation, knowing that we're going to leave the game in an exponentially better place than when we found it is everything. Um, that, that was um, one of the quotes. And I think that, really says it all too because that's what everyone's kind of striving for and in this case too to have you know a little bit of a re role of reversal with the women producing so much more and, and playing better having better results on the field um and to not have the equality um is it, you're right i think kind of strange so it's you know, it's anything like this is a step in the right direction for sure. And I think, you know, in a lot of ways, that's all we can ask for um, sometimes is just as long as you keep keep moving in that right direction, you know, keep moving toward equality. And I think this is a huge step for that. And that's it's awesome. So, you, gentlemen, you guys, this is nothing. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll be I'll be, you know, brief, but I think it's important. And it's also it's a it's a it's a small step in the right direction. They didn't get what they deserve. They deserve the full amount of money that the, that the men get, especially when you're driving that type of revenue. But I, I understand, you know, I mean, we, we feel the same way as a uh, people of color that have been marginalized over time. Mm -hmm. And we're always told like what Heather did. I'm like, we can't always just be quiet when you're, when you're quiet, then that gentleman, well, I can't remember his name anymore, Federico or, or, or something like that. Carlos, he yeah. gets, a, he gets to set the rules and he says, okay, these guys are going to get a dollar you're going to get 25 cents and that's not that's not how it should be things should be equal things should be fair and there should be more opportunity for everyone so it's um it's a it's a step in the right direction and hopefully we will continue to see that hopefully we'll see more female representation that are actually making the decisions not just mm. waiting for the the crumbs to come down the hill hopefully the the females are part of that discussion as well i never understood a statement where he said they have less responsibility it's the exact same game I mean, you run, you kick, you block, you fall, you get hit. You, you these in marketing. The women were way better marketing than the men were, and even you, and they were winning. You know, while I took that, Willie, I took it to mean like they aren't responsible for children. You know, like I'm saying, like men have to be the sub. Like, I'm going. What decade is this statement from? Is it from 1950 or 60 yeah. or that's? And I could be totally wrong, but that's the way I read the statement. Meaning they have less responsibility. They don't have to take care of a quote unquote family. And I think we know you don't know what kind of financial true. situation these people's no. families are in. You know, that that'd be saying that. That's the same with me. I mean, when you're the successful one in your family or whatever, sometimes that that burden falls on you. And they don't know that. They don't know where these women come from or do they have a family? You know, some of them want to get pregnant and have kids. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, these guys were losing. They were awful. The women were winning. They were winning. And for some reason or another that you, you say that, you know, I don't care what responsibilities they may or may not have, but that had nothing to do with uh, on the field performances. You know what I mean? These ladies go out and they play their hearts out, man. And they played the same level of games that these guys played. And the competition was just as fierce. So for them to say that, it was just, it's just, it's asinine. And maybe that's me growing up in a, in a house with, with, a, you know, with nine women. Uh, I respect the game. I respect the women. I respect their, the flow. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, these, that's, that's a stupid statement to make. I mean, almost, you know, uh, Neanderthal, like, you know, stupid. And, and you wonder why these ladies had to fight so hard to get to where they're at right now. And, and as Daryl said too, I mean, we, we always, we feel that as, as minority, sometimes we feel that that's 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 the boat that we're in, you know, you know, no pun intended, but it is February. So. So, so Heather brought up hockey and, and there's been a situation. And now with the conclusion of the Olympics, 
there's going to have to be some interesting decisions made because there's been an impasse in the women's game because they, they want to know how to, to go forward and grow the game. And um, I look at it like if the women, U S women's team couldn't get equal pay it would, cause in this country, we, the soccer is the one sport we don't have an established male dominance for a long period of time. There is no National Football League. There is no Major League Baseball. I mean, there is Major League Soccer, but it's not been successful the way the European models have been successful. Right. So where I'm going with this is, you know, there was a time about four or five years ago where, you know, the NBA wanted to do away with the WNBA. And there, there, there are certain franchises that did. You know, we have the Timberwolves and we have the Lynx. Houston has the Rockets. They no longer have the Comets, right? And they were winning championships. And what happened was some players in the NBA went forward and said, you're not killing it. You're, you're not going to. We're, we're going to make sure that you don't. And if you do, you're going to have labor problems here. And it, we want to see it live. And and to me, that's what has to happen with the National Hockey League. I mean, the, 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 we've got an entire generation that does nothing other than play the game, play golf, and go out on boats. And that's mm-hmm. all they do. And I think they've got a responsibility to the women that play the game to say, no, we need to step up financially and help them and grow this game and lend their marketing power to this to, to, to grow the game, because if they keep the women away, not associated with the National Hockey League, I think the chances of growing the game are just that much less. Yeah, it's it's tough. And right now, too, I think after the Olympics, you're going to see there's just kind of this this hole because so many of those Olympians um, were not part of the um, professional uh, hockey league that is going on right now. They split <laughs> and you have the professional hockey federation and then you have the professional um women's uh, players association and they they split because i'm not exactly sure you know all the reasons and anymore but they had the reasons to split off and i think i i don't know to me it just it's it's only gonna hurt things if you have so many of these great players that are trying to form their own entity um, and they were doing, I mean, previous to the Olympics, they were doing their own, like, uh, you know, dream gap tour and just kind of playing these different tournaments here and there. Um, you know, the there is plans for expansions for, I think, two more teams um, with the Hockey Federation. And their um, commissioner, who is, I think, only been commissioner for uh, not even a year, is going to be resigning as well. So they'll have someone new in there again. Um, I think... I mean, to me, that's that's number one is these players need to get back together and form one entity moving forward. Because at this point, there's so many like Kendall Coyne, Schofield, she's not with the player. Or she's not with the Hockey Federation. She's with this Players Association. And she is a huge face um, nationally and with the NHL. So mm-hmm. at this point, I mean, if you're talking about support from like NHL or certain players, it's like, well, who do they support right now? You know, if they like Kendall Coyne or any of these other players, pick who it is, you know, they're going to support her cause. But then where does that leave the Hockey Federation who, you know, has the league that they're running? And you know what I mean? So I do. It's it's just it's complicated right now. I mean, I, I hope it can go grow, you know, and go forward. I think, you know, the expansion with Toronto um, as a new team last year and then getting two more teams, I think is, is super helpful and they are making strides in, in the right direction. Um, but again, as well as things doesn't happen overnight, but yeah, it's, I, I think more support from the NHL would be phenomenal. I, I would much rather talk about games, but there wasn't a lot in, in the world of games happening last night. The other thing that was head scratcher to me was um, major league baseball yesterday, union had Tony Clark, attended negotiations for the first time since Major League Baseball's lockout began. It was accompanied by New York Met stars Max Scherzer, Francisco Lindor, and Brandon Nemo. Um, There's other players who attended also, but my point is this. They have a drop-dead date of... of March 28th. To to miss to make opening day, but I, I look at that March 28th, I said it too, well, but I, I just... How can they um, get a... a to not miss time. And I, I don't know how they're going to get this thing done if they don't sit down and talk to each other and they're not talking to each other. And this to me is ridiculous because this is a sport that of all the major sports, this is the last one that can afford a work stoppage. 
I mean, kids aren't playing it, you know, the way they used right. to. And, and um, they're watching it on TV. I mean, I don't know how many people consumed, you know, the, uh, the World Series last year. Or right now, could tell us who even won. And, and now they're talking about a work stoppage. I, I think, again, what decade are we talking about? What century are we talking about? And I can't believe these guys are finally talking to each other face to face for the first time. Ridiculous. It's really sad because I, I feel it feels to me like there's a, a lack of a sense of urgency. And there might be a little bit of a maybe just some some overconfidence of for people feeling like, oh, we're, you know, they're baseball's not the biggest show in town anymore. It's not, you know, 1970, 1971, maybe into the 80s, but it's not the, it's just not the number one, it's not the number one show. So if they don't do something, I mean, last time there was a, a stoppage, there was a, a lack of um, people that came back to baseball. And I mm -hmm. feel like that lack of people coming back to the baseball, even if it's the same as last time, could really hurt baseball. So I think it's um, something, you know, and I care about baseball. And I was, and it's interesting being here. I asked people about it, just two or three of my friends when I'm out on my walk here in Palm Springs. And um, they said, baseball? Oh, yeah, I don't care if they don't come back. I mean, that that's um, that's not, that's not a very good statement um, for the game of baseball. Yeah, especially when they're that they're down in Arizona. That's part, you know. I mean, they're that's their training. I mean, that's and it's like that. Though. People are saying that out of out of Florida too. But here's the thing. I mean, I think they they're getting complacent. I mean, you, you're right. Baseball is not the game it used to be, and that's their fault. It's not anybody else's fault. I mean, they they've made it uh, what they're what they're doing. I, I don't I don't I don't get their whole. Um, concept uh of not of this is no just now starting to come together and talking i mean it's just it makes zero sense i don't i don't get what they're trying to do I, it, it baseball has always baffled me i mean it is you know and when i because i may be living in minnesota long enough that you've seen the twins and you'd be like if they didn't play and no no disrespect heather but if they didn't play i wouldn't miss it one day I just wouldn't. I mean, I just when you just when you're so sick and tired of them going starting these streaks and they look so good and then all of a sudden, boom! And Major League Baseball has so many bad teams, and they only you know it's just a I don't know I I, I think no revenue makes, sharing, right? Yeah. I mean, you can say what you want about the National Football right. League, but at least they give a level playing field. Right. I mean, we live in a market where the owner once tried to contract his own team, <laughs> and he was gonna get paid by the league to do it. You know, and it's just like, are you kidding me? That's so funny. You know, it's yeah. So I mean, you you're right, Willie. They, they they said the last possible day to reach an agreement is February 28th, and I had March February, 28th in my, my mind. So I right. thank February you, and I, I apologize. Um, to to be all, all openers on March 31st, that would give them four weeks of workouts and additional time to ratify an agreement and players to report to camps in Florida and Arizona. And Heather, we know that you are you know you you work with and for the Twins. I'm not going to try to ask you to say anything inflammatory that's going to you know put you out there in any way, shape, or form, but. I've, I've never understood the greed of certain markets being allowed to, um, you know, just perpetuate itself to where the, you, you know, it's going to be either the Yankees, the Cubs, the Red Sox, the Dodgers, maybe a team will break through, you know, but as soon as they break through, they got to break up that team because they can't afford to keep them anymore. Exactly. So it's just no revenue sharing. It just makes no sense to me that they've been doing it for this long. Anyhow, Heather, I'm not obligating you to say anything. I don't know where I was going with that. So come on, Heather. Yeah. Don't I, get yeah no, no. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's frustrating for everybody, for sure. Um, you know, it's this is yeah the time of year we should. I mean, pitchers and catchers should have reported. We should be doing spring training. I should be getting excited about you know going to Florida for the first time in a few years because you know I hadn't gone because of the pandemic and um, so yeah. It's I mean it's disappointing. For sure. For sure. Hey, I want to get to this one, another talker. And again, this is somewhat on the court. Um, but so Michigan basketball coach Juwan Howard has suspended the final five games of the regular season and fined $40,000 for hitting a Wisconsin assistant in the head. This says triggering a post-game melee. I'd say that it was already triggered by that point, but um, okay. Uh, the Big Ten Conference also on Monday suspended three players one game for the altercation, two for Michigan, one from Wisconsin. Wisconsin coach Greg Gard was fined $10,000 for violating the conference's sportsmanship policy, but was not suspended. 
Howard is expected to be back for the Big Ten tournament, which begins March 9th in Indianapolis. Now, there's statements here from both guys. This goes on. Willie and I talked about this a little bit yesterday, and I, I'm going to say this again after seeing this. I know you can't throw hands. I know you can't, and he did. I know you can't, right? But Greg Gard gets nothing for, like, physically grabbing Juwan Howard and stopping him when he's just trying to walk past him and go. Mm -hmm. And if Greg Gard doesn't know that he did something wrong, is he not – why is he then trying to stop Juwan to explain himself? So I, right. I just think the, the the punishment handed out here to me was – is I mean, I you didn't have to give Gard maybe five games because he didn't throw a punch, but gets no games when he physically grabbed – Juwan Howard, when he's just trying to walk by him in line saying, I don't want to talk to you. You can't tell me that didn't contribute. If it didn't start, it didn't contribute to it. So I don't know. That's where well, I am on the whole it, thing. Tim, Tim, it, that started it. I mean, if you right. don't touch me and I just walk by you, then if you really want to talk to me, give me a call. Right. You got his number. You got a sports information director. Give him a call. I was, I was, um, you know, uh, disappointed with the whole piece and the fact that he's like, he thinks that it's not even about the timeouts anymore. Once you put your hands on me, you don't put your hands on me, on my body, in my chest, especially, mm -hmm. you know, and stop me and then try to, like, you know, get us. And, oh, you, you made the mistake of touching me, you know, in the – it's supposed to be a handshake line. That's a whole other discussion, but it's fine. So, I mean, just don't don't touch me. Walk by. Let's move on. Give me a call. So that was what started the event. And, like, typically the person who starts it is the person who does not get punished the most and mm -hmm. probably benefit to being a white male of a Greg Gard, and I'm sure his – followers were probably like yeah you, you know you showed him you know it's like no he you know but you live and you learn and i think it's um it's probably not a totally ideal punishment it seems like guard should have got more than that but juan did make the ultimate mistake at the end he did right he lost his temper and he threw a he threw a, a open hand so he's got to pay um, a little bit more but it feels like greg guard should pay um pay more but he lost respect. He lost my respect. I, I thought he was a good coach and a little bit better. Actually, I thought he was a better person than that. It was disappointing to see that. Right. I, I felt the same way. I was 100% uh, watching it. And I'm thinking, if you just roll back to tape and you see what, what, what transpired to transpire what happened, that's, that's all you need to see. And then you, see, then you, you, you either pull up two together and say, hey, what, what went down? Let me hear your side of the story. Let me hear your side of the story. And then, and I think punishment should have been at 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 some point. You know, the the games should have been equal. The fine should have been a little bit more. But for for Howard, he did like like uh, DT said, he threw the he threw the slap. But you you get there at some point. You get frustrated that you feel like you always got to be the better person all the time. And you we've seen it many a times where coaches sometimes just don't want to shake your hand. That's it's something that has went down where. We and before I shake your hand, I we need to have a conversation and see and, and try to work out what what ha what happened and and that that didn't happen there and he tried he physically accosted the man so that's you know at some point you get pissed and 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 that's what he did and 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 hands flew uh, well one hand did anyway and it wasn't it wasn't that egregious it was just that it was just unprofessional you know but uh, yeah the 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 penalties were lopsided and it was it was unfortunate. That it went that way, and it's really sad as far as far as the NCAA is concerned. It's really sad. A big Ten, a Big Ten. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. And, and what what really got me too? You said you know the, the privilege piece, Daryl, was in the post game comment when guard said maybe he doesn't know the rule, and I'm going Please. okay. Wow. So the guy who played in the Big Ten, played in the NBA, <laughs> you know, doesn't know the rule. You know, I, I'm just like that. To me, was the most insulting. Thing is something insinuating that he somehow knows more than Ju Juwan Howard does. He was going to explain to him, you know, this whole thing. And, you know, like I said yesterday to Willie, it's like you're protecting your – he said he's protecting his players from a bad situation. There's 10 seconds in the game. You're up by 14 points. If they turn it over and Michigan scores, you don't even have to inbound the ball and the game is over. Mm -hmm. I mean, were you, were, you're going to hurt their psyche? You know, what What was the, the – the whole thing just doesn't hold water for me. And I think it's really sad how this whole Thank thing – Five games and forty thousand dollars, ten k, and nothing. I just, I don't understand this one. It's a head scratcher, and another one. I'm, I don't get it all. My, my question is, what's a ten k for? What, what are you? What, what is? What is that? Explain why? Why you just? Why ten k? Yeah, I what, don't is, see what it did in he here. do to to earn ten thousand dollars? Fine, I don't understand that. You know what I mean? Break that. Well, you down. should be more, right? 
Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's my whole yeah. point. It's like, why yeah. would you just give him? You, I mean, what did? What are you saying? He deserved ten k for what was that? You know what I mean? He should have. He should have. It should have been equal for both coaches to set an example if that's what you want to do. But don't make an example out of one coach and not the other. So we got the uh, the Wild playing tonight in Ottawa. They're going to try to make it uh, two straight in this four-game Canadian road trip. I want to end with this one. I don't know if you guys saw this or not. The last story I put on their worst day ever, going back to U.S. women's soccer. I have never heard of such a thing. There's a, a, a young woman with the name of Michaela Moore, and she had a hat trick in the last game of the U.S. women's uh, national soccer team's game against New Zealand. The problem is... She plays for New Zealand, and all three goals went into her own goal. She had three own goals in one game. I've seen one. I've seen an own goal, but I don't ever remember seeing two. And they said in, the, they said in this article, an own goal is not uncommon. Two by one player in the same game is extremely rare. Three by one player in an international match is Halley's Comet. Um, so that she got taken out of the game or coach, you know, hugged her up for a long time. She's 25 years old. She's played in other world cup games before where I'm going with this is. So I tried to think, and I was going to ask you guys, and if you are willing to share, can think of anything off the top of your head, what was that moment where you had that Southwest airlines want to get away? Did you ever have anything happen in a game where you were just like, that was one, I can't think of anything quite that momentous, but I did play in a game. Where I thought I was Chuck Foreman and could carry the ball like the loaf of bread. Mm-hmm. We were playing Battle Creek, and in that game, I intercepted two passes and recovered a fumble. But I fumbled three times in that same game. So I was a human yeah. turnover machine, and wow. I was responsible for six turnovers in the same game. So wanna, even that one, I walked away going, well, you know, I was 50-50. <laughs> but yeah, that's not the way the coach saw it. I uh, I could tell you mine, is, but without a shadow of a doubt, I remember it was like, I was at practice up in in Winnipeg, and uh, I hadn't even, I was just trying to, you know, I was up there trying to do a tryout, and I, they put me on the kickoff team. This is when I realized you can't eat just before you go on the on the field. And uh, as soon as they lined up for the kickoff, I heard in my stomach, <laughs> and I got, my stomach curled so bad that I was like, if somebody hit me, this is going to be a disaster. And I, I literally had to go at that moment, like that second. It wasn't like, it was like now. And uh, I ate something really bad that didn't agree with me. And uh, I caught the ball and immediately ran straight for the sideline. <laughs> and I did not stop running until I got into the locker room. <laughs> The trainer followed me in, thought something was wrong with me, and I told him, I said, well, I got to say, please tell him I pulled a hamstring. Please don't tell him he found me in there. That's the that's the true story, man. It was the saddest day of my life. Oh, I want to get away. I was standing back there. I was like, I was like, uh-oh. I can't let nobody hit me, man. This is going to be literally a mess. I wish mine were that funny. I just all I have is um, you know being a, a young um, running back trying to pick up uh, Derek Thomas on the blitz, you know, coming out of Kansas City, and I was like, I don't think I, my two hundred and fifteen pounds is not going <laughs> to win this battle. This is when they still had oh the back and um, you know help out here or can block this guy one on one when oh. tackles were not blocking Derek Thomas one on one. The back is not going to have success blocking Derek Thomas. We fumbled in that game. He ran over me about five times. I literally was like, and I'm looking over there. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to block him to call the pass play. This is not going to turn out very well, you know. So it was um, literally one of, like, the longest days of my career. I think I fumbled in that game. But, I mean, my confidence was, like, at a one on a scale. Of <laughs> I wasn't a turnover. I was I was not a turnover. I was a failure on that day. So. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I, I was at a uh, Vikings uh, Chiefs game, and Todd, remember uh, Todd? I want to see Kalis, but that's not it. I got the Vikings left tackle, but Jeff George was the quarterback. And up in the press box, and Derek Thomas had six sacks in that game. It was a Sunday night game. And it, he was off so fast. I, you know, it was like, how does he know what, what's going on? Well, he figured out that when Jeff George had his hands underneath the, the, the center, he would take his bottom hand and he would drop it right before the, he would say hut. 
He mm. and, and so Derek Thomas was just watching his bottom hand. As soon as that bottom hand went, he was gone. So George would say Hutton, he was already not across the line of scrimmage, but already up and going around the Vikings tackle. And I, I couldn't figure out how he was doing it, but he said how he did it after the game. And, and you know, just study. And he picked it up that he was dropping his hand and, and he was gone to that. And wow. what a nightmare night for that. You know, so DT, I've been there where you've got somebody where you just have no answer for that person. No. Uh, hey, um, Heather, what are you working on these days? I read your piece, your piece on the young man who had to stop playing hockey. It was wonderful. Oh, where can beautiful. people find that if they haven't seen it? Uh, MinnesotaHockeyMag.com. Mm-hmm. And also I have a piece up on Winnie Brown. Brown. Um, please go read that as well. Um, a lot, a lot went into that piece and I'm, I'm uh, glad with how it turned out, but she's um, plays what? for the white caps coaches. I mean, she's um, you know, any girls hockey player in Minnesota probably has a connection to Winnie somehow, either they've been coached by her or have watched her play. Um, she's, she's amazing. So I have that piece up as well. It's still playing um, at like 43 years old. Yeah. Uh, 40, 44. She just turned 44. <laughs> So, yeah. Um, and I tried to ask, I'm like, well, so how much longer are you going to keep playing? She's like, I don't, you know, I, I don't know. It, it sounds like maybe once she has two boys and it sounds like maybe once they get into a little more, um, you know, traveling hockey, I mean, they're in a lot of activities. So she's like, you know, my parents never missed my games and my stuff. So I want to make sure I'm there for them. So we'll, we'll see how long she keeps playing. Um, but yeah, she'll be, and she'll be part of the broadcast team, um, for the girls state hockey tournament coming up this week, which is where I will be, uh, Wednesday through Saturday, um, tag teaming that coverage mm. with David Levake from the Star Tribune. So girls hockey tournament, it's, it's tourney time. So good yeah, for you. I'll be there. Hey, Willie, I just mentioned if, if you're ever looking for a, a gal to play in your tournament and you want an absolute solid dead ringer. I mean, she stripes it every time right down the middle. Every time. Is that right? Oh, Winnie? Okay. She's just she's just a legend. She's a legend. Yeah. DT, you're you're on your way back to this. I'm telling you right now, uh, I'm looking out the window. There's just driving, blowing snow. So it'll be great by the time you get back here. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, I look forward to it. I'll be firing up the John Deere when I get home, I'm sure. Yeah, you, yes, you will, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Willie, you're just uh, you're in between gigs and and uh, traveling next week. Yeah, all I'm doing right now is is planning. I'm planning out my my getaway and how long I can get away for. I'm just, I'm looking at the schedule. I'm looking at the you know LPE schedule and 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 where I'm gonna be so I can line up not to miss any dates and and fit golf in. That's what about you, Greg? I do, man. You just got to smooth it out, brother. It's got to smooth it out. Uh, So, um, Daryl, I know you've been traveling and everything, but I've been telling people we think we have Leah B. Olson coming on tomorrow. Fabulous. Yeah. Well, I mean, you were the one who made the outreach on that and told me. Oh, yeah. No, she's great. She's one of my idols. Um, You know, she's a great leader in the community. So, I mean, I'm sure that uh, Leah will do a tremendous job. Um, okay. Tomorrow. I wish I could. Uh, I'll, I'll try to tune in and uh, and watch. I think I might be on the plane actually then. So, well, we'll I see. will reach out to her today because I think I have her contact information too. But if you could follow up with her too, that would be great because I this has been your deal. I have not talked to her yet. We're hoping that Leah B. Olson is going to be on tomorrow as part of our series on Black History Month. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you, Willie Miles, for jumping in. Daryl, safe travels. And uh, we'll be looking for your stuff, Heather, from the, the girls' uh, state high school hockey tournament. This is Let's Play Every Day. We encourage you get out the sidelines, get in the game because you know what? That's where the fun is, right?